So there was really essentially five takeaways that I had from this fight. Um, the first one being that Tiafimo Lopez's uh, boxing IQ is very high. Um, and he showed that the whole fucking fight, man. He did not fall for the feints. He stayed with the pivots off the angle. The straight right hand to the body was very accurate. And I think kind of it didn't it made Lomachenko aware of how heavy his hands are and how quick he can get his hands off. Um, and, and it helped him establish distance. And then to be honest with you, his defensive reflexes are tremendous. I mean, there were times where Lomachenko let his hands go that he just straight up missed. Because of Lopez's defense, because of Lopez Lopez's reflexes, his ability to move his upper body to pivot with Lomachenko, there's not a lot of people that can match that IQ and athleticism, and I think he did a really great job of it for most of the fight, even in in the sections of the fight that were a struggle for him. Um, the second one is that honestly, Lomachenko's inactivity lost him the fight. There's a lot of great things that Lopez did. And he's a better fighter than I gave him credit for, than a lot of people gave him credit for. Um, but but Lomachenko's inactivity was the main thing here. I mean, he's he got started and he got started in round six. He got going in round seven, and round eight he was rolling. That whole process needed to start two rounds earlier, right? The fourth or fifth round, you know, okay. You've had three to four rounds to get a look. You know the kid's powerful. You know he's fast. You know he's smart. But the fifth round, not the seventh round, was where the heat needed to pick up in a serious way. And and it didn't. And w we found out since that he's had shoulder surgery, that he has had issues with his labrum. I think his surgeon said that he had like a bruised rotator cuff or a bone bruise on his shoulder. And I believe it's on his jabbing hand, his right hand. Um, if that's not correct, leave a comment and let me know. But, you know, and I've heard people say, I don't see how it affected the fight. But I think the way it affected the fight is he just didn't, he didn't let his hands go for six rounds. You know, the six, he started touching him with the jab a little bit. But it would be hard to say that, that he won the six round. I mean, I, it would be very hard to say that. But that was where he got started. And I'm saying, had he started, as opposed to getting going in the seventh, if he had gotten going in the fifth, I think that he would have won the fight. And I think maybe even gotten a stoppage. But, and it's hard to know how much of that is Lomachenko and just a, 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 a lacking in the performance from Lomachenko or. If it, or how much of it has to do with Lopez. If it is the speed and the power and the consequences of, you know, if I do this feint and then I let my hands go, but he's got the timing on the feint, I'm going to get caught. But that that's the risk you take at this level, ultimately. And Lomachenko's defense and his skills and everything were great. But he just wasn't fucking accurate. Or, or, or he wasn't active. And, and that's what lost him in the fight, ultimately. You know, the third... Takeaway for me is that Lopez is 100% an elite fighter, without a doubt. I mean, he's arguably the best lightweight in the world. I mean, this is the best win that anybody at lightweight has, by far. So you'd have to have him the number one at lightweight. You got to have him in your top 10 pound for pound. There's no way you don't. You know, ESPN saying Lomachenko is number one. I had him number two behind Canelo. So, you know, Lopez is absolutely... A top level elite fighter. 100%. Any question about that now is dead. It's a race. You know, I have my own questions about it. You know, are his feet more of an Andre Berto? Or can he move, can he move for real? Can he use that IQ to match with Loma? And he did. There's no doubt about it. 100% he did. You know, the other takeaway that I had from this fight was not just that the scorecards were bad. But if you're looking at it from a truly objective point of view, it, this fight comes down to how you feel about round two and round seven. Um, and maybe 12. But mostly how you feel about two and seven. And the reason I say that is that there are, I, I think Max Kellerman talked a little bit about this in a similar way. 
But to me, there's clear rounds in this fight, right? Lopez, to me, clearly won. One, three through six, and 12. Clearly. Loma clearly won eight through 11, right? So there's no doubt, I think, in everybody's mind, if you're watching this fight for real, that there's six rounds that are clearly Lopez's rounds. Clearly. And there's four rounds that are clearly for Lomachenko. So there's a range of realistic scores, right? Andre Ward, during the telecast, had it 114 to 114. I'm not going to lie, that's how I scored it. But the range of realistic scores is 8-4 Lopez to 6-6. You know, 7-5 Lomachenko would be pushing it. If you had the 12th for Loma, I don't see how you could be. He did land some good, hard, clean shots, but the activity level was just different. And so the range of realistic scores on this fight is 8-4 to 6-6. And anything really outside of that, you're not watching the fight. So the, to me, there was one good scorecard that the judges turned in, and the other two, to me, had no representation on the fight. Which leads to my last point that I th- I think a rematch is necessary. I've seen interviews with Lopez already where it looks like he's not particularly interested in that. But I don't know how you don't want to do this again. I you know maybe if maybe the money's not worth it or whatever. But in this coronavirus era, why would you not want to run it back? Especially if you feel like you dominated. That should be even more reason to want to run it back, right? You got the the two best lightweights in the world here. You know, if Loma's healthy come next winter, you know, I, I read maybe January, February, he can start training again. Why would you not want to run this fight back? It was a close fight, you know. Maybe they don't see it as a close fight, which to me would be advantageous to Lomachenko in a rematch because if Lopez thinks that he blew this fight out or he dominated this fight, which he did not, um, then he's not taking notes on what can I do better? You know, what? how could I have been more effective in the back end of the fight and not let it get close? You know, the fact that you win the first, potentially the first six rounds clean and and by the 11th, you're huffing and puffing and your eyes are puffy. You know, you're giving up a lead a little bit. Um, So... My hope is that they put this rematch together and that Lomachenko is fully healthy and that he has a a full training camp where he can, you know, go all out. It it would be very upsetting if ultimately, because I talked about this in the prediction where a lot of Lopez's best chance are if Lomachenko is just not fully healthy, it turns out that was the case, right? And I don't, people say that's an excuse or whatever. I don't view that as an excuse. An injury is an injury. And if if anybody who's been in athletics knows that you can get injured. And the argument, the counter argument is, well, you know, everybody's injured going in. There's levels to that shit, man. Like you pulled your hamstring and sparring a few weeks ago is not the same thing as a torn rotator cuff. It's just not the same thing. You ice for a couple of days, you stay low key, you're good to go. But you tear your rotator cuff. Now you're faced with the decision of, do I have surgery right now? Do I get a cortisone shot? Do I take a week off? Like what? So that's not the same thing. If somebody has to have an operation after the fight and then was training with an injury, that's a a, a huge disadvantage. My opinion is that he should have pulled out. They should have set a new date. I think it's possible the fight wouldn't have happened if they needed to do that. If he you know, is injured and just resting for a period isn't going to fix it. But to me, it's a fight that would have been worth waiting until January or February, or maybe not that long if he had had taken care of it when it happened. I'm guessing he got hurt sometime in September, potentially even August. So had he had the surgery, he would be better by this winter, and we could maybe get a fully healthy Lomachenko in this fight you know, come December, January. There's a part of me that wishes that happened because then, you know, there's always the asterisk of, well, I was injured. Well, that was your choice. And, you know, that was your call. I can see that it affected his performance. We all could see it. We could all see 
that that man had his hands in his pockets for six rounds because he thought the kid would get mentally fatigued. And he was like, I got to save it for this back end. I got to just... I got to just let the avalanche come on and he's not going to be able to take it. Well, it turns out he could take it. it. turns out he could take it and then come the 12th round that he could come out stronger than Lomachenko. So there's a lot to be desired here, in my opinion. And that's why you got to do a fucking rematch. <laughs>